So a little bit on, well, a significant amount about the root cause analysis and AI agents. I don't want to keep hammering the point about needles and stacks of needles, but <clears throat> these are some, this is some research we did. The average network engineer is looking at 38 dashboards. The average infrastructure engineer is looking at 15 dashboards, and applications are up almost 50 dashboards. And if you think of a full stack developer, now you're looking at close to 75 dashboards. Right? Too many tools, too many dashboards, too many alerts. I call these panes of glass. No, I call them glasses of pain, <laughs> right? These are glasses of pain. The other thing is, is the incident response challenge. 46 alerts from a fiber cut going to 12 different teams, all with different messages, all with different dashboards, all with different silos. So we have the P1 war room or the WebEx call, the Zoom meeting bring everyone together and what's going on, what's the root cause, what, is, what do your alerts say, here's what my alerts say. It, how do we do it, right? These are the three critical challenges. Bring in all the heterogeneous data into one data lake. Once we have a standardized data lake, we can then do normalization and named entity recognition to, to find anomalies. This is exactly what a human does, by the way. All the data. Throw out the good stuff, because I don't care what's working, I care about what's not working. Try to find the anomalies and come up with the correlations and ultimately a root cause. That root cause then filters over to the collaboration. Now this is bi-directional, as you're gonna see. This is what a smart alert looks like that you would receive on your phone. So you've seen me on my phone talking to the network in one direction, this is the network talking to us in the other direction. Smart alert. Right away, BGP down, established a down on these five devices, and we've detected a config change on this device by this user. Click on this link to go to the portal. Here's the 58 related events. One ticket, not 60 tickets. And it's in Metro, Kansas City, in America, right? So this is the idea of the smart alert. Context, actionable items, real insights, and so you know not to troubleshoot OSPF. This is a BGP problem, even though it caused OSPF downstream, right? Now, you can click on the portal, which will take you to this view. Those are the devices involved in this outage. We hop into the co-pilot and start asking questions. What's the probable root cause of the event at 3.28 PM? Now, I just want to, where did it go? Sorry. Um, I just want to highlight that When we talk about operational twin and the past, present, and future, this is looking back at 328, right? And I don't have to go into the syslog dump and find the log from that 10 minute window. I just ask, what is the probable cause at this time? So there's the two answers, the visual view and the text view. And since we know it's this change by Martin, maybe we should get Martin on the phone, right? And find out what he changed. <laughs> no, we don't need to. Show me all the config changes by Martin, right? Or right in the last hour, boom, there you go. Here's what Martin did based on the TAC acts. And you're gonna see we're getting shut down command. Shut down command was executed multiple times. Martin shut down a port. It led to BGP, which led to 60 events downstream. No noise. Identify probable root cause, accelerate incident resolution through natural language. Now, about the trust and moving on, closing the loop. What you see here is a ticket filed with ServiceNow fully agentically. And you wouldn't know if you read that ticket that a human didn't open the ticket and fill in the details. We have the root cause. Go ahead and open up the ticket in ITSM. Start, start managing this incident properly with, with tracing and logs and visibility. So we get the full ticket, the symptoms, the notes, related records, all completely done by an AI agent. What about sending emails automatically? So this is an agent that's saying, details from provider maintenance email, planned outage notification. In order to maintain the highest levels of availability, blah, 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 you get this agent sending emails, letting people know, your customers know, or your organization know about potential disruptions. This one I thought was really cool. 
<laughs> what if I put a calendar invite right into your calendar about the outage on Friday night coming up? AI agent can do that, right? Right in your calendar. Hey, look, there's an invite. Friday night, there's a maintenance window. Uh, going back to the example you were doing where you're using the LLN feature and asking, show me all devices. What happens if someone's, you know, not really confident in the output and it starts query again, like, are you sure? Did you miss anything? What happens to the system at the bottom? Um, Show me his work. Yeah, so we do have a show you the work uh, capability to actually take the query and go to the query dashboard. So we have ways of interrogating and, and uh, showing your work or enforcing the trust with almost like cookies throughout the system. So when I give you the natural language answer, you're actually able to go to the SQL query and validate the metrics and the logs that it used. The raw data is available behind the scenes. And that really helps reinforce trust because when a network engineer does this the first time, they can't believe it. And they want to be shown the evidence of that truth. Over time, they need less and less evidence and they start to build more and more confidence in the answers. What about other tech domains? So security, alerting information, optical layer, compute, you know, Datadog, Will you talk about that at all this morning? Um, no, but it's a good <laughs> question, though. To the point of, I have seen root cause analysis suggest that it's memory on a host. Mm -hmm. And you see the whole link through the show your work right. of the knowledge graph, right? I have experiencing traffic drops, and you it almost eliminates the network. It says, actually, but it's a, it's a resource issue on this node in this right. rack, right? Optical layer, we can monitor that. In terms of predictability of the future of your network, we can see trends and temperatures, for example, on optics and say in eight days, you're going to be in trouble on optic four because it's getting hot, right? Um, in terms of security, I would say tertiarily. I wouldn't say that we're a security-focused company. That would be misleading. However, there, there are natural correlations that can come out of that uh, natural language that are semi-related to security. I, I, you know, on the one hand, I think there's great value in product focus. I also think those guardrails can be artificial. And if you think about things as a whole system and start to take all the telemetry reporting um, alerting that I can get, you might be able to do much better at seeing the big picture of what's happening with an application running on all sorts of infrastructure. Right. No, good point. Good point. And, and we know that there's firewalls in the path. There's load balancers in the path. Right, so we have to get the visibility from those devices sure. as well. Yep. So what about um, using external sources for uh, some of your troubleshooting? For instance, a very common uh, thing that a network engineer would look at is how is my route being propagated through the internet? Um, I, you know, is and a lot of that is interrogating looking glasses and things like that. Right. Um, can this handle? going out and fetching external source data to- Yes, so, so I'll use an example of, let's say, NetBox or Nautobot as an external source. We bring in all that data to augment the metadata around, it's not just an IP address, but it's an IP address in San Diego, right? So we bring that metadata in. We are able to ingest from REST API systems and external systems. I, I don't know of anyone who's integrated Looking Glass, for example, with our tool. Um, but our tool is flexible enough that we can ingest you know, any data source at all into the system and enhance and augment the correlations. But I don't know that that would help with maybe root cause. When I get to the, the path tracing in a little bit, uh, you'll see how we can pa uh, trace paths through the network out to the internet. So like, I have a vendor service like DDoS mitigation. Right. My DDoS protection provider will tell me if I'm, if I'm under mitigation. Right. right. Um, but that is not an, an internal, I mean, usually a network engineer would have to go to the portal, right. log in, look at the mitigation right. status. Now, if that, that service you mentioned has a REST API, if they did, then we could tap into the REST API and ingest that data and let you know that something's been blacklisted or not whitelisted or whatever. As long as there's a REST API, we, we're happy to incorporate the data. And could it use that to predict a, or tell me what my traffic, why I'm seeing a traffic drop or 
is my traffic it would, it would enhance, to another uh, edge? For it, it's a little theoretical, but in theory, it should actually make those correlations to say, I'm bringing this data in. This is why we're dropping traffic because of the DDoS mitigation. Okay. It, it's, it's an exercise on paper to try. It would be an interesting use case.